Hi guys, I am Shelly from Dream Abroad and in this video, I am going to throw light on the question a good number of people have been asking us lately. And the question is whether to go for CELPIP or for IELTS. A lot of candidates who have to take language tests as a proof of their English proficiency ask us the question as to which of these tests is easier and which is better. Well, there are a lot of parameters that determine whether one should take CELPIP or IELTS. First of the points to be considered is the difference in the formats of these tests. Secondly, it may be important for you to know how far is the nearest CELPIP or IELTS center from your location. The types of the questions that appear on each of these tests is also different. Also, time taken to complete these tests is another significant consideration. Lastly, number of days in which the result is declared, fees for each of these tests, and the material available for preparation of these tests is also very important in deciding which test you should take. Let us start from the centers available. As of October 2018, CELPIP as you can see is available only in five countries, namely Canada, where it can be taken all across the country in a lot of locations in each of the Canadian province. In India, CELPIP is available only in Chandigarh. In Philippines, you can take CELPIP only at one center in Manila. Similarly, in UAE, there is only one CELPIP center which is in Dubai. In USA though, there are two centers in New York and one center in Seattle. Uh, this means that USA actually has three centers for CELPIP. Well, this clearly means that if you have to take your English proficiency test, whether it is CELPIP or IELTS, from a place which is farther than the centers discussed above, you don't really have an option of taking CELPIP. So you'll have to appear only for IELTS. Now for those actually who have an option of choosing between CELPIP and IELTS because they have centers of both of these tests close to their homes, let us begin the analysis from the first and the most important aspect of the test, that is format. Now, CELPIP and IELTS both have two versions. CELPIP has the general, uh, CELPIP general test and the CELPIP general LS test, where this LS stands for only listening and speaking proficiency test. This means there is no test of speaking or writing. However, CELPIP general LS test is accepted only for citizenship in Canada. I repeat that, CELPIP general LS test is accepted only for citizenship in Canada. So the candidates applying for PR, such as you, have to appear for the CELPIP general test, which assesses functional, listening, reading, writing, and speaking skills. Coming to IELTS, this test also has two versions, namely academic and general training. Each of the versions assesses the candidates on the skills, same as those tested on CELPIP, which are listening, reading, writing, and speaking. Now, candidates who want to study abroad have to take academic version, while those who want to apply for PR have to take the general test. CELPIP listening comprises of six parts, which are divided in various sections. Listening test, however, begins with a part known as practice task. In all, there are 39 questions to be solved in an average of 50 minutes, where some of the questions will be given only to develop the question bank for the future CELPIP. Thus, these questions will not have any marks to them. As a test taker, however, you would not be able to know which questions make the unscored set and will have to answer anyway all the questions given to you. IELTS listening has four sections comprising of 40 questions in all. You are marked on each of the questions given to you and the test gives you 30 minutes to solve these questions. Now here it is also important to note that IELTS will give you 10 minutes extra to transfer your, uh, your answers from the booklet to a separate answer sheet that's given to you. Thus, CELPIP gives 39 questions in around 50 minutes, to be precise, from around 47 to 55 minutes, while IELTS gives 40 questions to be solved in 30 minutes. Also, 
on selpep listening there will be some set of the questions which will be unscored because they are giving those questions to prepare the question bank for future selpep ielts does not give any unscored section moving over to reading selpep reading has four parts comprising of 38 questions in all the test starts with an additional part called practice task which has one questions like listening selpep reading also contains unscored items used for test development you will not be able to tell scored items from the unscored ones so solve each of the questions with the best of your efforts ielts reading on the other hand has three sections comprising of 40 questions in all first two sections will have two passages each and the last section will have a long passage which is one passage only so in all on general training for ielts reading you would get five passages each section has around 13 questions on an average no unscored items unlike selpe here total time to solve is 60 minutes the selpe reading has 39 questions to be solved in 55 to 60 minutes while ielts gives 40 questions to be solved in 60 minutes precisely now let's see the difference in the writing for both the tests both selpep and ielts give us two tasks selpep has task 1 as email writing for which you will get 27 minutes after which the screen will move automatically to the test to the task 2 Now here you have to remember that selpep is actually a computer based test so when i say the screen moves automatically i mean the computer screen which moves automatically to the task 2 which is named as responding to survey question now task 2 is for 26 minutes in task 1 you have to write a minimum of 150 to a maximum of 200 words at the bottom of the screen you will be able to see the total number of words you have written task 2 is actually a situational response in which they give you a situation where you can make one of the two choices given to you thereafter you have to explain the reasons for your choice in 150 to 200 words in ielts you will be given 60 minutes in all to complete both the tasks both writing tasks which you can divide in whichever way you want that means Ideally you should give 20 minutes to task 1 and 40 minutes to task 2 but if you want to give 15 and 45 minutes that's perfect with them even if it is computer based ielts they would not move the screen automatically after any particular time task 1 here is a letter to have a minimum of 150 words task 2 is an essay of a minimum of 250 words ielts does not give you any upper limit of the words on writing the selpep has task 1 which is email which has a minimum of 150 words to a maximum of 200 words while ielts has task 1 which is a letter which is a minimum of 150 words it does not have any upper limit of the words task 2 on selpep is responding to a survey question in a minimum of 150 to a maximum of 200 words ielts has task 2 as an essay to have a minimum of 250 words no upper limit of words again an important point to remember is that selpep has individual writing this means that individual writing tasks are timed differently but ielts does not give us any individual writing which means that it has only a total time limit for the entire writing test now lastly speaking test First of all, speaking test on selpep is a computer based test, meaning you will have to record your answers on the computer while ielts has a human touch and gives you an individual examiner for speaking test. Here also, your responses are getting recorded, but you are required to talk to a human and not to a computer. And the recording of your interaction is being done on an audio recorder for your for the records of for IELTS people. This also means that Selpip has a speaking integrated test within the whole test, but IELTS would require you to take speaking tests on a different date and venue from the main test. Selpip speaking has nine questions, inclusive of the first question, 
being the practice task and the rest beat eight different tasks. The test is for a total of 15 to 20 minutes. IELTS speaking on the other hand has three parts namely general introduction, cue card and discussion which would last for around an average of 12 minutes on the whole. Now let's move on to the time duration of the test. This whole discussion that we have done till now shows that CELPIP is a one sitting test which lasts for about three hours. IELTS on the contrary is two sitting tests, one being the speaking test and the other being the main test comprising of listening, reading and writing. Main IELTS test is for a total of two hours and 40 minutes. Now CELPIP test scores are available online through the CELPIP account in eight business days after your test date. There is in fact an express rating which is available at an additional fees. Now this express rating is, an actually, is actually an order for which you have to pay something extra to get your results earlier. If you go for the express rating order, CELPIP will send you scores in three business days if you live in Canada and around four business days if you live outside Canada. IELTS on the other hand declares tests on your account through emails as well as SMSs if you choose that option without any extra fees on the 13th day of your main IELTS test if you have taken paper-based tests. For the computer-based IELTS, the results are declared in five to seven days. As far as the fees goes, the fees for CELPIP is substantially cheaper, is less in fact than uh, IELTS in Canada, India, Philippines and UAE. However, IELTS is cheaper in USA. Uh, by not much though, uh, the difference remains for around only $40 in the difference of the uh, IELTS of, and, and CELPIP fees in USA. Now before making up the mind as to which test you really want to take, you should also pay attention towards the availability of the material or the trainers for CELPIP and IELTS. Now only because IELTS has existed internationally from much earlier than CELPIP, the preparation material available on internet for IELTS exceeds that for CELPIP. Similarly, there are more training institutes and more trainers available for IELTS than for CELPIP. The most authentic material for CELPIP as well as for IELTS can be found at their websites, especially in the sample papers to let you know what to expect on the paper. In the end, I hope the information I provided in this video could help you to make the decision regarding your choice between CELPIP and IELTS. For more information on the details related to PR process and preparation, please keep following our channel. If you haven't liked, subscribed or commented on our channel yet, what are you waiting for? Please go ahead. Your likes, subscriptions and comments are our encouragement. Go ahead, do that. Bye-bye. See you soon.